Hello Pittsburgh, welcome to A Plus Schools Education Update. I'm James Fogarty, Communications Director at A Plus Schools. And uh, this month we're talking A Plus Schools annual report to the community on public school progress. My guest this month is uh, Carrie Harris, Executive Director of A Plus Schools. And uh, we're gonna be talking about positive trends and priority challenges for Pittsburgh public schools that we see in this year's data. Um, and then how you can use our report to, to the community to spark fact-based conversations about how to improve your child's school. Join us. Welcome, Carrie, to A-plus Schools Education Update. Um, I'm excited to talk to you uh, today about our report to the community. So first off, can you share with our audience a little bit about why we produce this report every year? Sure. Well, A-plus Schools, as you know, is Pittsburgh's community advocate for equity and excellence in our public schools. And so we believe uh, that essential to improving student outcomes is an informed community. Our job is really to inform and engage this community into working for better outcomes for our black and brown kids, but all kids as well. And so how are we going to get to that goal? We believe the best way to get there is to provide an equitable education system. Um, that means not providing every student with the same things, but providing kids with what they need to reach and exceed the shared standard of graduating from high school and pursuing some sort of post-secondary education and training. Gotcha. And what are some of the strategies that we, that, you know, we talk about when we're talking about equity that we're trying to get to? So we've identified four big strategies that we know from research make a big difference for kids, right? Uh, great teachers in every classroom, nothing could be more important uh, in the K-12 system. Uh, resources distributed based on student needs and in ways that improve student outcomes. Differentiated supports such as uh, special education, uh, gifted education, behavior management, and opportunities like art, music, advanced coursework, um, those sorts of things. Uh, we believe that really uh, serious attention on these four strategies uh, in every school in Pittsburgh makes a big difference for kids. Gotcha. And so how does the report that we're going to be talking about help people understand the progress that we're making or not uh, towards those goals, towards those strategies? So. Uh, what we try to do is report on some key indicators uh, around each of those strategies uh, in the report and we also look at then student outcomes uh, uh, for every school in the district and trends across the district. Um, so this is a go-to source if you want any, any school in the district uh, to s sort of see how they're doing in these different indicators but also looking uh, across Pittsburgh Public and charter schools. And can you walk our audience a little bit, you just started talking about that a little bit, can you walk our audience through what they'll find in the report so besides the you know mm -hmm. those indicators and on schools? So uh, in this book, I think the book is 128 pages, there is a page for all 57 uh, Pittsburgh Public and charter schools uh, in the city of Pittsburgh so every school has at least a page. There are comparison charts in the front of the book that compare schools on a number of important indicators. And then there's the executive summary in the front of the book that really looks at trends uh, across the system. Gotcha. And what will you find on those school pages? You know, we talked a little bit about those equity indicators. Uh, what are some of the key, the key outcomes or key indicators that we're, key academic outcomes that we're looking at? So um, every school page will include some teaching indicators. One will be teacher performance, so we'll show you the percentage of teachers that are uh, performing at the proficient or distinguished level. We'll show you the, number, the percentage of teachers that are new to the building. Every page has the number of teachers in the building. Uh, principal stability, which is a look at how many principals they've had over four years, because that's a big factor to teachers. We also look at teacher satisfaction. Uh, in the survey question, uh, the teachers take the survey every year. One of the questions is, my school's a good place to work and learn, and they rate their agreement on that question. So we report uh, on that for every school as well, on teaching. Um, we'll, look, we'll show every school's site-based budget number. Uh, this, we estimate, is probably only about half of what is spent on students at the school level, but it's the best number we can get our hands on. It includes uh, teacher, average teacher salaries, principal salaries, books and supplies, and a little bit of discretionary money. So that'll be there for resources. Um, and then we have a number of school climate indicators. We're looking at chronic absenteeism. 
which is the percentage of students that have missed 10 days or more, 10% uh, of days or more, I'm sorry, which means 18 days of the school year. Uh, we'll look at suspension rates and we'll disaggregate that by race and special education status. Um, we'll look at parent satisfaction, so how many parents would, rec uh, the percentage of parents that would recommend the school to um, somebody else. Uh, and we have some special accomplishments that students uh, in the school have achieved. Gotcha. It's a lot um, of information. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, is there anything else that folks will find? Like, what about high schools? What, what else are we looking at there? So, high schools. Uh, you know, this is a, in a. We have a lot more things that we can share about high schools. The goal of K twelve education and of our equity agenda is really to make sure kids across the graduation line. So, we'll report graduation rates. We will report, and we do report, the percentage of students that were seamlessly enrolled in post-secondary education or job training. So of the 2014 seniors, how many of them were enrolled in something uh, by the fall of 2014? Um, we'll report uh, the, the percentage of seniors that were eligible for the Pittsburgh Promise by their GPA, so by a GPA of 2.5. And um, we'll report the participation in advanced courses, uh, college-ready courses. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then third graders and eighth graders do special things that we kind of pull out and focus on. What are we focused on with uh, with third graders and then with eighth graders and why? Right. So we've been. This is the eleventh time we've put, published this report. Uh, and over time, we used to report all sorts of tested grades and subjects. But um, last year, we redesigned the report to just focus on key milestones. Uh, so those milestones are aligned with, if not the same, as the superintendent's uh, goals in the whole, school, whole child, whole community plan um, of uh, Pittsburgh Public Schools. They are third grade reading uh, because we know that students need to be able to read by third grade in order to read to learn going forward. So we'll report on that. In eighth grade, we report on algebra. Uh, algebra turns out to be a gateway course. Um, for kids, uh, it'll, if they get algebra out of the way by eighth grade, it increases their ability to take advanced math in high school, uh, which is incredibly important as the economy becomes more math heavy uh, in terms of where the jobs are. Um, and then in high school, we'll report on Keystone graduation exams. So we'll report on algebra, the algebra test. If you haven't taken it in eighth grade, you take it by the 11th grade. We'll report on that and the literature exam uh, for um, 11th graders in the district. And then finally, how do we look at gaps over time, you know, in achievement and attainment, and why is that so important? So it's important if we, if we want to make sure that 100% uh, of our kids are achieving, graduating, going on to post-secondary education, we want to make sure that all kids are achieving. And so it's important that we really look at our subgroups, especially those groups of students that we know have been historically underserved. Uh, on each page in the report is a chart that shows you the gap in performance at the school level between white and black students. It also shows you the gap in performance between black and white students in the district. Mm -hmm. This year we also have another little chart uh, because this is the first year for the new um, PSSA test which is Pennsylvania Core Aligned. So it's a new assessment. So we've separated that from historic data on the chart uh, and we have a new chart for the um, new PSSA. Great. Great. So where would you like to, to start, you know, in talking about the progress that the district has made? Well, I think I'd like to start at the end goal, right, which is to get uh, uh, the extent, to answering the question, the extent to which we're getting kids ready uh, to thrive and prosper when they leave the Pittsburgh public schools. Um, we look at three indicators, as I mentioned earlier, to describe post-secondary readiness. Uh, the graduation rate, the uh, percentage of students that are qualifying for the Pittsburgh Promise based on that 2.5 GPA, and the percentage of kids that are taking advanced courses. Um, this year, we are happy to report some really good progress here. We know that the graduation uh, rate has increased by six points since 2011. That's great um, Sixty-five percent of the district seniors overall earned a grade point average that qualified them for the Pittsburgh Promise at 2.5 or higher. Um, that's seven percentage points higher than in 2012. Uh, the good news here is that that increase was shared by both black and white students. So uh, uh, qualifying white students uh, had a 10-point jump since 2012, and qualifying black students had a 17-point jump since 2012. And what that means is the disparity between black and white students in Pittsburgh public schools shrank by seven points. 
Uh, we're happy with this progress, but we also know what that means is uh, that there are kids that didn't get that 2.5, right. and many of them graduated anyway. We estimate it's 400, 450 seniors graduated last year without a 2.5, and they're in our communities today in the workforce, hopefully um, uh, w minimally prepared uh, to, be, uh, to be productive. Uh, thankfully, the Promise has an extension program, so some of those students will probably still go to CCAC or other trade schools, um, uh, uh, and we hope they do, but we, we need to really be attentive to this. We need all of our kids meeting that threshold. Yeah, definitely. So the third indicator we looked at, though, was uh, participation in advanced courses, and we see that overall in the district, 29% of our um, 9th through 12th graders are in, enrolled in advanced placement courses. These are courses for which if you pass an exam at the end of them, they, call, they qualify for college credit. So this is an important um, indicator. We know that just taking that course uh, turns out to be positively uh, correlated to success in post-secondary education uh, just because of the rigor. We also see that 22 percent of our kids, our um, 9th through 12th graders, participated in um, Centers for Ad Advanced Studies courses, which are called CAS courses in the district. Gotcha. So it's all good news there. Good. There. How are students <laughs> doing on other milestones, though? Yeah. So, uh, so we, we talked about what's happening uh, in um, post-secondary readiness. Let's go back to third grade. Mm -hmm. uh, we, when we look at the percentage of third graders reading at grade level last year, we see only 50% of Pittsburgh's third graders there. So out of about 1,600 third graders, 827 of them are reading at grade level. That means that we have another 827 that aren't. Uh, so those kids, many of them are in fourth grade this year, and that's got to be a priority, uh, getting them up to grade level. We continue to see wide variation uh, across schools in the district um, and across uh, in, in charter schools as well. So when we look at who, where are we getting the best results for black students, we see that the Urban uh, Academy Charter School uh, had the highest uh, percentage of black students reading at grade level at 80%. It, within the district, the highest percent uh, was at Dilworth. Um, where they had 59% of their third grader, black third graders reading at grade level. Uh, so you contrast that with where we saw the lowest rates of passing that test, and that would have been at Morrow in the north side, where just 17% of third, black third graders uh, were reading at grade level. So we've got some work to do there. Definitely, definitely. How about algebra? How are students doing in algebra in eighth grade? So. Um, Again, uh, this is a gateway course, right? So we want to make sure everybody has access to it and those kids that are taking it are doing well. Across the district, we see that 51% of um, uh, eighth graders that took algebra passed the algebra keystone exam. So uh, that means 49% didn't. Uh, good news is they'll have a chance to take that test again and again until they graduate, uh, in order to graduate. Um, we see that though no students took algebra in three of our schools, so uh, it was not available to uh, students in three of our schools. Uh, but we had one school, SciTech, where 100% of eighth graders took algebra. Uh, so we think uh, that's good. Even though we have three schools that didn't offer it, last year we had five schools that didn't offer algebra to eighth graders. So we definitely see access increasing, but we're still not where we need to be. Gotcha. And then finally, the Keystone exam, where 11th graders take, you know, some of them as 8th graders may have taken algebra. Mm -hmm. How are our 11th graders doing when they get to? So they're doing a little better. 52% of 11th graders are passing the Keystone Algebra by the time they're in 11th grade. Um, so 52% uh, is a little better than 51%. <laughs> uh, but that means that we have about 623 kids that are seniors this year that have not yet passed that algebra uh, exam. And so that's got to be a priority, obviously, when they graduate. Uh, in literature, we see that 66% of our um, last year's juniors passed the Keystone exam. Uh, again, that means that about 447 of this year's seniors are in schools and have not yet met that standard. So we believe that needs to be a priority before these kids graduate uh, to get them over the line with literature. We continue to see a wide variation across schools in this performance. So for example, for black 11th graders uh, in literature, we have a high of 95% of black 11th graders at SciTech uh, being proficient or advanced on that keystone, um, and a low of 33% at UPrep. Uh, similarly with algebra, the high is again at SciTech with 72% of black 11th graders uh, proficient or advanced, and the low is at 17% at Westinghouse. 
wide variation. Uh, definitely there are still pockets of excellence within the Pittsburgh Public Schools and we definitely need to make some more progress. So as we're talking about that wide variation among schools, what do we see in terms of the achievement gaps and opportunity gaps for students? Well, we have persistent and stubborn gaps. Uh, they are not present in every school, um, but they are present across the district. We see a gap of 26 points in literature between black and white students uh, district-wide and 35 points in algebra. Um, interesting the, uh, thing, though, when you disaggregate the data and you look at uh, black Pittsburgh public school students compared to black students across the state, our black students actually do a little better um, in both algebra and literature and our white students did a little better than white students across the state in literature. Uh, the gap is still big, so it's, you know, we're not celebrating or high-fiving yet, but it is good to see that uh, we're making a little more progress there. Mm -hmm. um, and so with those overall attainment numbers, you know, what do we know about schools, what the schools are doing to accelerate growth, right? This, this concept of, you know, value added. Can we talk a little bit about that and what that means for, um, yeah. for us? So um, what I, I should say, there's a couple ways to look at va value added is uh, sort of comparing how kids did from one year to the next. I will say that, that and I should have mentioned that uh, even though we have that wide variation across schools, we definitely have some schools that are getting, uh, that are making good progress. We have schools that are consistently high performers. They are SciTech, Kappa, and Obama, where uh, African American kids and all kids are doing uh, well. Um, and last year we saw some of our uh, traditional comprehensive high schools, a couple of uh, the most struggling, make really double-digit gains um, in the Keystones. We saw Carrick High School uh, have a 10-point jump in literature wow. and a 14-point jump in algebra. And we also saw Westinghouse, which saw a 26-point jump in its, al um, its literature scores and a 15-point jump in algebra. So these are schools that obviously have a very long way to go, uh, but this progress is, is is really big and it's important to celebrate it. Mm -hmm. But your question was really about VAM. Yeah. Uh, and so what we know is that uh, ch changes in the percentage of kids proficient and advanced at a school and a district level change from year to year and they provide an important point of comparison. Um, but they don't show us whether or not students have improved over time, right? Uh, value added measures provide this information by measuring the growth of groups of students from one year to the next. Uh, Value-added measures are also called VAM. Uh, it, in Pittsburgh, uh, that is calculated by the Mathematica Policy uh, Institute, and um, they uh, they estimate that e each school's contribution um, to student academic growth. The calculation takes into effect how much students grew from one year to the next, but it also takes into account. Um, different demographic factors that may uh, predict or inhibit uh, their success, such as uh, economic disadvantage. So then what they do with these scores is they compare them to the state average for growth. So VAM scores for Pittsburgh schools are then compared to those in the state, um, across the state. So uh, this year as we examine the number of schools whose contribution to uh, student academic growth was at, above, or um, below the state average. Mm -hmm. And we see an increasing number of Pittsburgh schools uh, making uh, uh, growth, contributions to student growth that are significantly, significantly above the state average. Uh, we've gone from six to 10 schools uh, in total. Um, we also see uh, that the number of schools whose contributions to uh, student growth were significantly below the state average were cut in half in math. Um, and so that's good progress too, because we want as few schools, no schools really, <laughs> with growth uh, below the state average. So um, we're, uh, we're really encouraged by this VAM data. We also know that um, compared to three years ago, we had 15 schools that had growth you know, above the state average, maybe not significantly above, but above the state average. Uh, as of 2014, we have 25 schools. Uh, that were showing contributions to student growth above the state average. So that's half of our regular schools. Um, uh, and that's, that's what it's going to take in order to close uh, and reduce um, racial disparities in achievement. Gotcha. Well, that's a promising trend. What about those equity indicators that we started talking about teaching and uh, you know, school climate resources, those kinds of things? What are we seeing there? Um, so some good news. Uh, we, we're reporting on teaching because we know, as common sense would tell you, that the 
quality of the teacher matters more than almost anything else um, in a, that a school can provide. So we look at the percentage of teachers uh, performing at the proficient or advanced level, and we see the vast majority of Pittsburgh's teachers, 97% in fact, performing at the proficient or distinguished level. Mm. Uh, and it's important to note that distinction in Pittsburgh public schools is a, is a higher bar than it is for teachers across the state of Pennsylvania. So we're very encouraged by that. When we also looked at trends in te teachers agreeing with the statement, my school is a good place to work or learn and learn, uh, we see high, high levels of agreement across Pittsburgh public That's schools. Um, uh, you know, slight differences from one year to the next, but it's overall uh, very high. Uh, so we are very encouraged by that uh, teacher satisfaction. And how about resources? What do we know there? So uh, we know that resources are essential building blocks. Uh, that's how we're able to provide great teachers and opportunities and supports to kids. Um, again, we can only look at the site-based budget because that's all that's available to us uh, from Pittsburgh Public. Um, and when we look at trends across the district, we see that we're spending more in schools uh, that have fewer children. Um, and we also know that we're spending more in schools with higher percentage of low-income students, as we would hope and expect. So. Uh, we spend more in schools at the top two quartiles of poverty. These are schools with 73% or more of their students um, being identified as economically disadvantaged. Uh, and there are 26 of those schools. Uh, we, s we spend nearly $1,300 more per pupil um, in schools also with less than 300 kids. So size, configuration, and poverty seem to be what's uh, predicting um, uh, per pupil spending uh, in Pittsburgh public. Gotcha. Um, and then how about like school climate? What are, what, are our, what are we finding out from parents and from folks across the, the city? What are folks thinking? So when we, we looked at trends across the district, we really looked at two indicators of school climate and they are chronic absenteeism and suspension. Uh, sort of being at school is an indicator of whether or not you feel it's a safe and welcoming space. Uh, and what we, so we looked at chronic absenteeism, which is 18 days or more missing school and we looked at uh, suspensions. And we see uh, high percentages of students with chronic absenteeism and suspension across the district. Um, high schools have the highest suspension rates with 32% and middle schools are at 29%. Um, these two groups also have the highest percentage of chronic absenteeism, which is not surprising. Um, what we see is compared to last year, suspension rates have slightly increased in our K-5, to K-8s and middle schools and chronic absenteeism has slightly increased uh, in those groups as well. Um, that said, despite those overall increases, we know that about 44% of our schools actually reduced suspensions, wow. and about 22% of our schools actually uh, reduced chronic absenteeism. So those are some, they're very concerning uh, trends generally, but there are some bright spots in there. Gotcha. And finally, you know, folks want to know about enrollment. How, how's the district doing in terms of maintaining, holding, uh, population? What do we know there? So we, c we don't know what school age population looks like through the city. We didn't look at that in this report, but we can look at the trend of enrollment in the district. And unfortunately, we see that enrollment continues to decline in Pittsburgh public schools. In fact, we are, have about 1,100 fewer students than we did four years ago. And half of that enrollment decline uh, occurred over the last year. So this, uh, you know, continues to be an issue that I think the district and the school board need to deal with. It has big implications for the district's budget and for how it operates. Um, and just how to manage that is going to be an important conversation. Yeah, definitely. So summary, how, how would you sum up what we've learned um, about both progress and some challenging priorities? Yeah, so I mean, I think this report, there's a lot of good news, right? right. Graduation rates are up, mm -hmm. promise eligibility is up. Uh, black and white students in the district, when you disaggregate the data, did slightly better than the state on the Keystone exams. Um, more schools are showing contributions to student growth. Uh, teacher performance and satisfaction are high, and two of our most challenged high schools saw double-digit gains uh, in their Keystone exams. So those are some promising trends. Um, I th we obviously have way more work to do. We know this was the first year uh, of the new PSSAs aligned to the Pennsylvania Core Standards, and these these higher standards are going to cha are challenging us, right? We see that gaps uh, have increased, and this has got to be a priority, um, really sort of teaching differently so that our kids can meet these um, new, higher, and important standards. 
we need to see more of our schools pursuing uh, excellence, right? Mm -hmm. Closing that gap, um, reducing suspensions, improving attendance, and really a keen eye on that third grade reading. Um, we've got to see some, we definitely want to see better, uh, better outcomes there going forward. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, Carrie, thanks so much for joining us this month. Is there um, anything else folks should know? Um, well, I would say this. Um, this report uh, should be, have been mailed to every household uh, in Pittsburgh that has children in the district. Uh, we also mail it to kids, uh, fam households with children under five. Uh, if you didn't get a copy and you want one, uh, go to your local library. Uh, go to your local elected officials, office, uh, community centers. We've delivered these reports all over the city now. You can also call our office or go online to our website, and uh, there's an electronic version that you can read there. Uh, so um, I think that's the only way. Is there another way to get it? No, I mean, that's it. I mean, <laughs> Aplusschools.org is the uh, website in case folks are interested, and 412 697 1298 is our number. Um, and, you know, I, it takes a lot of people to make this happen, so we want to thank the folks that really did help put this uh, report together. Um, our editor and writer, Faith Chance, she's done this for I don't know how many years All now. All 11. All 11, <laughs> and uh, keeps us on task and on target. We have a data analyst, Dan Morrow, who uh, made sure he checked and double checked all the data. Um, folks at A plus at, uh, at A plus schools that helped out and A to Z to communications, and uh, you know finally Dr. Lane, who really uh, made a commitment to transparency. Um, so we really appreciate that. Um, if you would like to get involved with us, again, go to our website aplusschools.org. Um, we encourage you to use this report to uh, you know talk to your community, talk to principals. Really, I mean, I think it's, it's a really great starting point um, in place where you can have a good database conversation about what's going on in our schools. Um, and that's it. So thank you so much, Carrie, for being here this, yeah, this month. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, you know, we hope uh, this spark, sparks some conversation across the community. So thanks. I hope you enjoyed this edition of A Plus Schools Education Update. Uh, I'd like to take, thank, uh, thank Carrie for uh, breaking down what you, we've learned so far this year and producing our annual report to the community. We hope that you'll uh, ask us to come to your community meeting. You can call 412-697-1298 to uh, have us come join you and talk about the presentation. And next month, we're going to be talking about our school budget. So if you have any questions, you can tweet at me at A plus schools uh, or email me at info at A plus schools .org. Um, and thanks to PCTV21 and all those that make this possible. See you next month. Hey YouTube viewers, if you liked what you just saw, give us a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe here to get more of our videos from us. And uh, if you have something that you'd like to, some feedback you'd like to leave us, give us a comment. Just write it down below this video. Thanks so much.